alluded to inflammation before. Now, all of us know it's a, it's a buzzword. I mean, it is a thing, I guess. How do we know if we're inflamed? What is causing the inflammation? And how do we mitigate it? One word answer. <laughs> 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 There's a lot of, well, I mean, like, a lot of people know about, I don't know, like, herbicides and pesticides and things like glyphosate and vegetable oil and ultra-processed foods. I mean, raise your hand if that was just a huge newsflash for you. <laughs> <laughs> most of us know that. And honestly, I think most people these days also know about some of the stuff I was talking about earlier, like a diet wide in a variety of polyphenols and flavanols and anti-inflammatory herbs and spices, or if your arteries need primarily meat, meat from clean, organic, grass-fed, grass-finished sources. What I wish more people knew about when it comes to inflammation is air pollution, light pollution, and electrical pollution. Right, like paying attention to things like HEPA air filtration and other air filtration modalities, including ozone and UV in your home and office environment, that's super easy. Like you can get standalone air filters. You don't have to be like a rocket scientist and know the technology. You just put it in the room and filter the air. You can take all the bulbs in your house and replace them with, with lights, like the cans, with halogen or incandescent or biological LED, so you're limiting inflammation from light pollution. And you can also do things like unplug the Wi-Fi router and use something like Cat7 Metal Shielded Ethernet cable and an easy adapter to plug in all your devices like I do at my house. And maybe a dirty electricity filter in each bedroom of the house because you'd be surprised at the number of people who I've worked with who are eating like what appears to be a pretty pristine diet. And they've got elevated, back to your question about testing, um, um, a, a, a homocysteine and CRP and inflammatory markers and a lot of, of, the, of the, the, the poor sleep and the poor mental function and the other things that you tend to see go hand in hand with that. And then you look at their electrical environment and they're in a dirty EMF soup and they're underneath these bright lights all day and they're not paying attention to air quality. So I think environmental considerations are the things that a lot of the people who are already doing, you know, the self mutation and the healthy eating, et cetera, forget about, and then there's like that small subset of the healthy people who just freaking are exercising too much or too hard. And that's a big thing too. Like who knows the number of minutes of intense exercise per week at which the law of diminishing returns set in and you're actually doing harm to your body and shortening your lifespan. Yeah, yeah, Dr. E said about three hours and it's close, it's even slightly less than it's 150 minutes. 150 minutes and so many people are forgetting that like it's okay to walk and like go for easy swim sit in the sauna and do a cold bath like you don't have to do crossfit every day and that's also a big big thing that's responsible for inflammation just like exercise addiction and self body shaming because you didn't get your heart workout in for the day or whatever so that's another thing to think about is is the exercise piece for some people um, just to touch on the what i see in clinic you know um, inflammation in traditional medicine is this organ disruption and you know, the, the associated symptoms. But if you take it back, inflammation is a process that's designed to protect you from things that your body finds external. And we're talking about things like toxins from our foods and et cetera, and environment, metals, um, or bacteria, parasites, pathogens that can overgrow and overpopulate within our organs or bloodstream. And um, then that leads to a whole systemic response, right? Like COVID demonstrates that that to everyone that you could have COVID in a whole host of symptoms and that's what inflammation does because inflammation can manifest in a whole host of ways. It can be rashes or skin uh, disorders that come up up and down, dry skin, inflamed skin, um, you know, uh, irritated skin, it can be brain fog, can be energy dysregulation, it can be hair loss and uh, so it can be a whole host of things. It can affect any of your systems and organs in your body. Um, and then if you can start to focus on all the environmental factors, fantastic, you will start to get a healthier immune response. But importantly, looking at where, looking at the data points and looking where it's manifesting and what are the drivers for you, this is functional medicine, the root cause medicine, which looks for what you're reacting to and why. Is it because you have detoxification issues? Is it because you have leaky guts? Is it because you've got fungal overgrowth? There are common things that we are seeing in a functional approach that traditional medicine is not looking for. And those are the kinds of patients that we're working with day to day. Talk about the battery. When you're in a state of inflammation, you can make the environment better. Sometimes it's not enough to get yourself out. If you're, if you're above 
say 40, 45, if you don't have that regenerative capacity that you did when you're 20, if you're 60, you don't have that regenerative capacity. And so this is where the support is really important. The, the, the tools, the nutrients, whether it's NAD+, plus, very safe nutrient, hyperbaric, the nutrient, the most important nutrient, oxygen, flooding your, your body with 20 times more oxygen than you can carry. These therapies are here because they're tools to get you out of the reserve so that then you can go and continue your journey with environmental factors and you can self-regulate better. I've seen it time after time when patients are trying to do all these things, they just can sometimes get in a bit of a worse place. And, um, and you know, if they're really struggling, go to a health system that can support you to get you through that. Like, you know, what you're doing with your, you know, your personalized health program is what we're doing here at Human. You know? And um, so inflammation for us is the new currency. And we're teaching, you know, we're teaching doctors now, don't accept these syndromes, IBS, don't accept chronic fatigue as something that we just, oh, we don't know how to treat that because we're not trained to look for the root cause. There's no acceptance amongst the medical system. Actually, it's because we don't know and we're not looking in the right places. It's really as simple as that. We need to put a different set of glasses on and look a bit deeper, right? And the interventions are not complicated. They're really not. You know, taking some supplements for a few weeks to fix leaky gut, you know, modulating your diet a little bit during that period of time. And so when you're on a prescriptive approach and you apply healthcare, doctors, what do we do? We apply healthcare, we prescribe strategies. And when we prescribe people, you can expedite the healing process, get you back to the ability to regenerate and self-regulate. Okay, brain function. How do we elevate our brain so that we're thinking sharper, smarter, happier, we're more resilient, we just have that joie de vie? Oh, some of the stuff we are tackled, like like inflammation and diet optimization, obviously play a big role here. Um, I, I, I think there actually is something to be said for this kind of ever expanding world of smart drugs and nootropic. How many of you in here like mess around with that stuff? Like, all the time. Yeah, like there's, there's all sorts of different nutrients out there. There's some mixed up in that dirt tea stuff. I don't know what that stuff is. That, yeah, 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 what GPC, are you going to say this time? <laughs> um, but, but I think a, a few things are important. First of all, your you know the myelin sheaths in your brain are comprised of really two, two main fatty acids that I think are very important to have from a dietary standpoint. Does anybody know what, what the two main fats are to eat that are good for the brain? I'll make it free. Because it's not like, like a giant fatty streak ribeye steak. As a matter of fact, sometimes saturated fats can increase leaks of blood-brain barrier and cause a little bit of inflammation. Yeah, it's omega-3 fatty acids, particularly DHA. So dosahexanoic acid is amazing for the brain, slightly higher dose fish oil, big cuts of salmon, Lots of some of the small cold water fish, like the smash diet, sardines, mackerel, anchovy, salmon, and herring, fantastic for the brain, as is oleic acid, which you would find from what? Nuts. Olive oil, yeah, oleic acid, olive oil. So a diet really, really rich in extra virgin olive oil, and DHA is very important for the brain. A lot of these plant flavanols and polyphenols I talked about, particularly anything rich in anandamide. Who knows what's rich in anandamide? Again, we've got some of it floating around here. I'm drinking some of it right now. Our chocolate, a cacao, also fantastic for the brain. Hooray, I just gave you all a, a good excuse to eat lots more chocolate. Uh, save some for me, please. Um, in addition, I talked about this a little bit in, in my talk at the Health Optimization Summit. A lot of us get stuck in our comfort zone, and we don't make smoke come out of our ears by learning new things. Now, of course, there are brain game apps like Sudoku and in back and brainscape and luminosity but i like to play brain games that make your life better and enhance your relationships such as learning a new language picking up a musical instrument you've never played before learning a new song on a musical instrument that you already know how to play challenging your brain not only with new experiences such as travel and food and restaurants and cooking etc but also new activities that challenge your brain and then all the nootropics, the smart drugs, et cetera, assuming you're already paying attention to the things I talked about earlier, air pollution, light pollution, electrical pollution, food pollution, et cetera, all of those other things are kind of like the icing on the cake. And yeah, there are a lot of really good smart drugs out there. There's a lot of good nootropic compounds out there. But the, the secret that a lot of people don't tell you is you have to steer them, right? You can't get a nice car and park it in the garage. If you have the Ferrari of the smart drug supplements and the nootropics, they really only work if you're challenging your new brain in ways 
that are novel and exciting, or you're using those on days where you really need a whole bunch of folks. If you're just popping a bunch of sleep drugs or smart drugs because you're sleep deprived and you want to get it through a day of doing the same old things that you were doing anyways, I don't recommend that. I use, I, for that, I recommend things like NAD or, or creatine or a power nap, et cetera. But man, if you're already getting DHA, oleic acid, learning new things, et cetera, and then you use a lot of these nootropic smart drugs, et cetera, and challenge your brain simultaneously, that's where the neuroplasticity and the neurogenesis and the growing of new neurons and the enhanced neuronal connectivity occurs. The last thing I would throw in is technology, right? There's a lot of light sound stimulation machines, infrared light apparatus for, for stimulation of neural tissue, uh, electrical frequency devices, etc. I like a lot of stuff. I use a lot of that stuff. And, and I use it on a regular basis because I think that that really not only helps with clearing out inflammation of the brain, but also shifting your brain into a brainwave state that you might desire, such as alpha or gamma or reduced beta brainwave production. production. So there's a lot of devices, you know, the, the neurovisor, the brain tap, the, the V life that you can use as brain enhancing technology. And those are kind of cool as well. So there's a lot, a lot of cool things you can do from the, from the basic to the advanced. That's fantastic. And, and I, I think that from my experience, we, we, we used, we, we did neurofeedback very good programs with patients with Dr. Andrew Hill from the Big Brain Institute in LA, got great results. And from working with a lot of pro athletes um, who need to get into the flow state, and don't know how to get into the flow state. Because the ability to focus comes from a state, and the best, the best nootropic is being in a state of flow. An empty mind and a healthy recharged battery. Um, and that requires sleep, right, et cetera, et cetera. So state management and, and driving people towards not this stimulated, I need the nootropic, I need Ritalin, I need caffeine. I mean, the, the evolution from there needs to be, okay, actually I need flow. And in, within that is the whole story around thought management, ego management, spirituality, community, purpose, vision, mission, you know? And we're, we're working with a lot of the most elite, not a lot, but a few of the most elite boxers and racing drivers and teaching them the simple principles. Let's be aware of your thoughts. Your brain is designed to generate thousands of thoughts a day. You do not need to hang on to every single one of them. Understand if it's serving you, and if it's not serving you, let it go. Learn to meditate, and get to the point where you're meditating just by being or walking. Don't need to be sitting down, but you'll get to that point where you can downregulate yourself very quickly. You go to these conferences, someone told me this, that a lot of the speakers, they're walking around and their state energy preservation is so good. They're just really calm, talking. But when they're on stage, they're performing. That is what we should be training ourselves to do, and understand that we're a power plant of energy production. Right? Our mitochondria are taking oxygen, making energy, taking nutrients and making energy all the time. But we're utilizing that energy all the time as well. Through inflammation, through overthinking, through over worry, through stress, through overtraining. You know, so be aware of your energy creation, utilization and restoration. You know, and we're teaching our athletes that it's work it's just surprising to me how many athletes are missing out on these basic basic principles.